Hello there and welcome back to another edition of Silly Car Showdown. Today we are taking a look at the Volvo 850R. This was not my first choice for today's episode. Uh, I was going to use something completely different, however the well, servers for Forza Motorsport 7 are down and I can't get a paint job for it, so instead uh, we are using the 850R. Not like that's a bad thing, however I was going to use this car at some point and while well, it is pretty much my favourite car of all time, I absolutely love this thing. It, it's a silly uh, a state car with a five cylinder turbo petrol engine and it was very quick and it was a racing car and a touring car it's fantastic anyways let's go see what we can do to the 850R is the incorrect button let's click the correct button right uh, of course as per this series uh, the only restriction is the car can only run on its standard drivetrain standard drivetrain is a front wheel drive so that's what we're sticking with Anyways, as far as engines, we have got the choice of the 2.6 litre inline 6 from a Skyline, 6.2 litre V8 LS, not LS, and there's an NASCAR engine available for this, so naturally that's what we're choosing. I love the standard 5 cylinder, however, the standard 5 cylinder can't really make that much power, so yeah, NASCAR engine. That also makes this uh, one of the most powerful front wheel drive cars in the game, if not the most powerful front wheel drive car in the game. Uh, the only thing I can think that might be this is the Nissan Duke, if that still has the GTR engine, uh, which I don't think it does anymore, so yeah. Anyways, of course, uh, this does mean PI wise, it should be quite good. 245s on the front, not quite as big as I was hoping for, and it will be exactly the same on the rears. While this car might get a lot of PI, I'm not expecting this car to be particularly quick. Uh, the only other front wheel drive cars we've had are the Citroen 2C VTEC and the Mazda Speed 3. Now, both of those were running about 600 horsepower, and by the time that we're finished with this one, well, it's going to end up with almost a thousand horsepower. Near as makes no difference. So, yeah, the controllability uh, probably going to be a bigger issue in this than it was in the previous front-wheel drive cars, even the 2CV. Uh, but you never know, maybe this will surprise us, maybe it will be absolutely phenomenal to drive, although I do doubt it. Mm. Chassis rigidity, yes, I'm going to want that. Uh, and we will have full weight reduction, and now finally we will do the P-style or resistance. There we go, take the restrictors off it, we end up with S766, 5 seconds to 60, 236 miles per hour, top speed. Yeah, this is going to be quick in a straight line, if it can get the power down. It might be a very quick car overall, if it can get the power down. I mean, 994 horsepower, 783 foot-pound torque, 2,900 pounds of weight is all good. Front weight distribution of 56%. Uh, yeah, and S766. The Mazda was mid-S class, I believe, and the Citroen was just at the top of A class. So, yeah, this one... Uh, I'm expecting this to end horribly, but you never know, maybe the 850R will surprise us. Either way, to find out, let's take it to Brands Hatch. Alrighty, our 850R is here at Brands Hatch and ready to set its time. Our current leader is the all-petrol powered BMW i8, that's at a time of 46.066, the 850 unlikely to beat that, the turbo gauge is freaking out, uh, the front wheels are on fire already. Oh, we got it? Nope. Oh my god. Okay. This car might have many, many, many issues. Anyways, yeah. A 46.066 is the time of our leading BMW i8, the 850R. Probably unlikely to beat that as far as the 850R's target time. Probably the Mazda Speed 3, a 50.266 was the time for the Speed 3. Uh, the Citroen 2C VTEC, the other front-wheel drive car that I mentioned, currently the slowest car we've ever had with a 52.799. I don't know if I mentioned it, but, but I do kind of like the way the turbo gauge is just sort of having a mental breakdown. There is no turbos on this engine, at least unless NASCAR's changed significantly from what I remember. Anyways, first lap not too good, and we are not going to get stopped into this first corner. Yeah, things are not looking good already for the mighty 850R. Is there any way I can stop the wheels spinning? Also, the ghost is on the screen. God damn it, hold on. Anyways, that's now resolved. Fucking the ghosts in this game. I, I don't know if I mentioned them. I can't remember what episode I deleted them on originally, but uh, yeah, the I hate the ghosts in this game because it's like, oh, well, only work in rivals mode. It doesn't work in rivals mode. It only works when you're actually just racing by yourself. 
which is not a good thing. Anyways, there is actually apparently a way to make this car not have full throttle all of the time or set the front tyres on fire. So, that's good. As we're discovering... Right. Where is the braking zone? I'm going to brake nice and super early. And even that's just not quite enough. The understeer is immense. Of course, as you'd expect, 200 and... Well, 245 tyres on the front. It does not get stopped. It really does not get stopped. It's quick. No doubt about that once it stops spinning its wheels. It's quicker when you actually don't spin the wheels. But handling-wise, it's not... The brakes are horrendous, and the actual turning grip is also horrific. Again, I, I think it's down to the the fact that the front tyres just are not hugely sizable. It's pretty god awful when it comes to that sort of stuff. As far as lap time wise, we can't count that because it was a dirty lap, and we're gonna go off again. Right. <laughs> Let's not spend time trying to recover that. I, the problem is, I don't know where anything is on this car, because the brakes are awful. The steering is awful. It, it's... Trying to figure out any zones for this car, like braking zones is hard. Trying to figure out the, you know, just where you can put down the power and the understeer and everything. Even like off-power understeer is still very present. It's a bit of a shame when you consider the A50R, once you build these things up, surprisingly okay vehicles in terms of driving capabilities. They're not stupid quick, but uh, in, Forza 5, uh, in Forza 4 at least, as B-class vehicles, they did prove to be pretty darn okay. Alright, as we run up now for lap number 5, we do have a couple more laps in the 850R to give it hell, so that's okay. I'm right, gonna break all the way back here. Oh, apparently that was a clean lap time now. 50.915. Technically, we did have a rewind, but uh, yeah, apparently the game's classing it as a clean lap time, so I guess we will as well. Uh, so that's okay. That's um, quicker than the 2C VTEC. I don't know if it has any right to be quicker than that, because I honestly don't know which one I enjoyed driving least. Just try that corner, the, that curb that we just went round, uh, apparently. Big issue in this car. Oh my, <laughs> it, it's just all awful. Um, setting the front tires on fire. Rushing towards the line. Alright. Please stop, please stop, please stop. <laughs> it just doesn't want to stop, does it? It's... yeah. Really very, very odd. <laughs> like, there's no redeeming characteristics to this. I'm trying to be nice to it because I really like the 850R. Again, probably... If it's not my favourite car of all time, it's definitely up there, but... My god, it's just atrocious to drive. It really is unbearable. Uh, well, we did manage to spin those wheels up. As we come on to our final lap. With the 850R. Try and squeeze the trigger lightly. Run up to the line. 50.992. Alright. One more lap. Do or die in the 850. The rev count are completely useless. I believe it was not the Mazda as well. well. It is in pretty much every car we use because of course we put a big silly engine in it uh, and watch it fly. But yes, alright. Nice, he does it. Go on, this has got to be quicker. It feels like it's being quicker. It is being quicker. We are up four tenths. Come on, ease around the last corner, alright, the goal is to wait for the front wheels to stop spinning and then try putting down the power slowly, but sod it, throw caution to the wind, a 50.639 for the Volvo, yeah, 
that's not good to drive. That it, it is horrific in terms of its driving capabilities. It, it's a cool idea putting an NASCAR engine in a Volvo, but uh, naturally it doesn't work out good. I mean, you could all wheel drive swap it, but even then, I'd imagine this thing would be a little bit on the odd side to drive. Anyways, as far as its lap time, a 50.639 will put it in to 8th place. It just squeezes below the Mazda Speed 3. I think if you got everything right on this course, it could potentially uh, be battling with that Mazda, but as it stands, I would take the Mazda. It drives so much nicer than this does. I'm willing to trade off some straight line speed for actual controllability. It is uh, about a second up on the rotary BMW i setter, which is pretty good, and it is uh, good about two seconds up on the 2C VTEC. So, there you go. Anyways, and that is the 850R. If you've got cars you'd like to request for the Silly Car Showdown, you can do so in the comment section. Although, do bear in mind, uh, I've got a fair few requests and I am starting, you know, I do quite like to stick my own ideas into this series. So yeah, and as always, you can check out my channel in the description box below for more silliness. But yes, thank you all very much for watching, yeah, thank you all very much for watching, and until next time, farewell.